Hi there, my name is Jay with CompuMatter and with ServerMatter. And you may have seen a video a while back that I created on the vulnerability of using port 3389 for your remote desktop access. Uh, because as it turns out, the whole world uh, is using 3389. Naturally, that's what Windows packages it at. And, uh, and that's no secret to the hacking community. So rather than knock on a variety of other ports, they zero right in on 3389 uh, and they try to hack your, into your computer um, using that port as a throwaway because remember, if that port is open, um, and it's only open if you choose to use remote desktop protocol, uh, if you don't turn that feature on, your port's not open, the vulnerability doesn't exist, and that's the way it comes out of the box. But if you purposely open that port uh, and then go a step further than that, um, you go from your computer to your router and then you open that port, now that's where the functionality begins. The outside world gets through the router, gets through your computer, as you'll need to, to remotely access your computer, uh, and then your credentials are tested, and if they pass, you're let into your Windows desktop. Now, if you're a hacker, you already get a pass on the router. The firewall of the router is not going to block you. Um, the firewall on the computer is not going to block you. And so all that's left to do is to figure out what the username and password is. And so what you have is um, people brute forcing attacking with, with software over and over and over again, trying different username and password combinations, and they'll do it for months or years, or however long it takes. They've got plenty of time. And there's no sign that that's happening anywhere in the background. Your computer, your Windows computer, behaves completely normally. Uh, your server doesn't reveal anything. With the single exception of log files, if you're a system administrator and you dig into those logs, or if you're, um, you've got a system like we do where the server alerts us in the event that lo a log file is getting excessively large, as it has in this case. So let me show you what all this scrolling activity is behind me and what it relates to. And to do that, I'm going to uh, play a video that I recorded last evening as I was in the diagnostic phase of this event. Log file, this is the Samba log file. You will see repeated attempts uh, and failures. And I'm going to bring out um, some extract of this because this is representative of what I'm seeing over and over again. When I start the virtual machine within this server, it has a Windows virtual machine on an Ubuntu server. Uh, repeated attempts, you can see the password send user in this case is null. And then it shows a computer that does not exist on our network. And if we move on down, we say, um, that's the same, oh yeah, this is, this is actually the same computer, but there are multiple names being substituted. They're not always the same one. There's about four or five of them that are being used. None of them, here's, here's another one here. None of those are actually systems on the network. Um, you can tell the, net, the computer came from VM1, and it looks like something viral. I can't imagine that this is not an attack of some kind coming from the, uh, the VM. Again, I shut the VM off and it disappears. These are actually the only computers on the network. None of them resemble that. I'm going to shut down the, sir, the VM right now. You'll notice as it goes down, okay, it just shut off. The logs stopped. So it's definitely coming out of that machine, but I don't know what. Okay, at this point, uh, I'm about to run a virus scan on the Windows, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a Windows desktop on the network or the Windows virtual machine, they're all the same. If it's got remote desktop turned on, that's the problem. In this case, it is a virtual machine. So I'm about to run a virus software. In fact, I ran two different virus programs and neither one of them raised a red flag. Couldn't find a problem. One line that stands out, of course, is the authorization check, checking password for unmapped user.
Um, but if we take a snapshot of some of this stuff, so we're taking a little uh, closer see look a at similar the logs pattern. Here. Uh, here it's looking it says checking paths for unmapped user and it uses administrator one, which I have no idea. That's obviously not right. You can see couldn't find user admin one, uh, couldn't find user scans. Definitely something's knocking on the door of the uh, Samba Active Directory environment for both of these servers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's coming from the outside world or internally. Anyway, that's all I've got, so uh, let me know your thoughts, would you? Okay, now I'd like to bring in the Windows computer that has the problem. This is the virtual machine. Let me full screen that for a minute. Now I've tried, as I've mentioned, uh, two different antivirus programs that did not recognize that there was a problem here. Uh, one of them was ESET and the other one was Komodo. Now there you can, there's an infinite list of this sort of thing and, and many of the trusted ones may have picked it up, but the point is you can't just run one scan. You've got to layer that. We've learned that being a computer store, we've learned you've got to run two, three, four, however many different virus programs until you're really sure that nothing is there to be seen. Now in this case, Malwarebytes picked it up. So Malwarebytes is open and here's an example of what we're looking at. Uh, it, it is brute force detected on looks like four or five different unique IP addresses and I'm sure that list will grow over time. I'm just curious where these IP addresses are coming from. find that kind of interesting. This first one is coming out of Brazil. That's the 177. Uh, one oh, this one here, the second one down the list is coming out of Bulgaria. So it looks like uh, those are the only two countries showing up right now. And uh, I suspect more will follow in time. But it is an, uh, evidence that it's not limited to one person in one location. Okay, so I want to show you a graphic demonstration of what happens to the log files when I turn off the brute force protection and turn it back on again. So over here in Malware Bytes under this settings gear and security, we'll scroll down right now to brute force protection and turn it off. Oh. Beep. Okay, I've just turned off the brute force protection and you can see it's off over here and you'll notice that the log file is now continuing on as it was before. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. See how long that takes to react. Didn't it's still still logging. Okay, I just got my first notification on the right. Uh, it's off screen that it picked up. Uh, an intrusion detection, a brute force detection, and as soon as that notice appeared, the constant logging stopped. They detected it, it stopped, maybe took them 60 seconds, that was about it. Okay, and then you can see as we move along, the log is clear. There may be an occasional log entry, and that's normal, but not that continuous every second of every day. And that's normal there, that's, that's allowed, succeeded, normal type connection activity. So uh, what is the moral of the story uh, when it comes to remote desktop? Some people have to have it. If you have to have it, then you need to have a program like Ballware Bytes running, um, looking for brute force and stopping it because it's allowed to get into the, up to the point where it can ask Windows for permission to log in further. Uh, now, in our case, I didn't talk much about it, but we have a domain. We're operating on a domain. The hackers don't know that. They assume that we're, you know, that we are not on a domain. And if you're not on a domain, um, you know that area where it said no, as um, a, a, that's the area where the domain would go in. So, 
domain uh, puts a whole nother variable onto things. Hackers aren't going to know what name that a particular company chose for their for their domain because the domain, there's an endless variety of domain names that they could pick. Um, and so they're assuming there isn't a domain. So we, in our particular case, we have never been in any kind of real danger. But this still goes on all day long and we still need to nullify uh, the constant attempts by those entities from getting in. So if you're a business and you're on a domain, you've got a layer of safety, but you still need to install something like this just to block it at the source. Beyond that, um, at a minimum, you need to change your port number. We've talked about that before, but that's obviously not uh, bulletproof. It helps. Um, you, we'd have so much, we'd have a hundred or a thousand times this amount of log activity if in fact we were using a standard 3389 port. Um, I've got another video that demonstrates what that's all about. But for me, as a server administrator and a person who sells, you know, we, we create a server called uh, Server Matter and we sell that to small and medium sized businesses as a solution. I um, I'm going to recommend that we move away from remote desktop entirely because in the decades that I've been in the business, I've seen too many hacks, too many things get through. Let's, let's say I have a client who has one of our servers and malware bytes expires, they don't renew it, they forget it, gets lost in the shuffle. Now they're vulnerable again and the door knocking starts. Uh, even though we've got the domain, we've got another layer of protection, I still don't want that kind of access to uh, that business's health. So I'm going to use something like this. Let me slide this over from my other screen. This program, uh, this right now it's in the uh, test phase, remote matter. It's based on a technology called Mesh Central, uh, which was originally created by Intel Corporation. Um, there's another program out there called Guacamole, which is uh, created by the, uh, it's currently run by the Apache Foundation. Both great programs for accessing your computer remotely if in fact you're a server administrator. If you're not, if you're not, if you don't own your own server, you're not a server administrator, these programs really, they're not accessible to you. So you have to just rely on the suggestions that I originally talked about. But what you're looking at here is in fact the identical computer that we looked at a minute ago using remote desktop. Except I'm accessing this from a browser. I'll make that a little bit larger for you. So it works the same way as remote desktop without the remote desktop vulnerability. Completely goes away. I can turn off the service remote desktop and it doesn't matter. In fact, I'll give you an example of that. I'm looking at this client's computer. You see where it says allow remote connections to this computer? Somehow, okay, we go. And show settings. It says allow. I'm going to switch that to don't allow. And I think that'll all, yeah, don't allow. Okay, so that's good. We're going to minimize that for a moment. Now, what you're going to notice is malware bytes is not going to have any more logs. Uh, it is currently 11.14 uh, p.m. The last block came at 11.13 and 11 and then of course there were quite a few of them, 11.10, 11.12 and so on. But that's going to be the end of it. There are no more, there's not going to be any more detections. We're not going to see any more windows pop up, any of that kind of stuff because the port has been completely shut off. Even though the router, as we speak, the router port is still open, which we'll turn that off too because there's no need for it to be. Um, so they're getting through the router, they're getting to the Windows machine, uh, but they're being blocked by the firewall in the Windows machine, so there's absolutely no vulnerability. So that's the direction that we're going to head in. Anyway, I, uh, I hope that this video has been uh, informative to you. This has really been a day of my life. I mean, um, this started this morning and off and on throughout the day. We didn't spend the whole day on it, but, but certainly I've got 
five hours invested in the process of discovery because I initially thought that this was a virus within the Windows computer. Uh, and, and I guess I have to approach it from that standpoint because that's the, the most dangerous something can be if it's already in the server in some way. Now all it's got to do is make the hop from Windows into the Linux uh, server environment, that operating system, and it creates another level of danger. So I had to approach it from that, that standpoint and then work my way out, but was happy to see in the end that we really didn't have a vulner we didn't have a problem of any kind and uh, and thankfully our uh, our server's alert system made us aware uh, right away that the log files were piling up and uh, there was something we needed to look at there so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time bye bye